Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me on this talk. Uh, I will be talking about testing our Angular 2 application with some cool uh, technologies like Protractor and CucumberJS. But first, who am I? Uh, I'm Sam. I'm a freelance software engineer. I currently work as a front-end architect at Proximus, where I'm doing some very cool stuff using uh, Electron, Angular 2, Protractor, uh, testing, everything you want. And you can uh, always contact me through Twitter or via mail, Hangout, or connect on LinkedIn. But first, um, some shameless promotion at NGBE. Um, we're organizing the first Angular conference in Belgium, the end of this year, 8th and 9th of December. And it will be one day of high-level workshops with one day of high-level conference. And this is all because of, thanks to some international speakers, basically rock stars in our community, which will become uh, and speak about everything Angular related. Uh, for example, Igor Binar, the Angular team lead, will be doing our keynote at this conference. And many other, you've probably already have seen somewhere on the internet or uh, read a blog about it. On their, on their blogs and articles or whatever. It will, would also not be possible without an awesome team. So we have 16 people behind us. And Jurien is a great co-organizer. It would also not be possible with some great sponsors. And I'm also giving a 50% discount for anybody who would like to join. But you have to do something for it. Yeah, you need to create a pull request on the NGBE 2016 website to improve it in any way. But if you don't find anything to improve, you can also just find an error. And it's a very obvious error. And if you do some digging, you will find it. And it's, it's very obvious, it's easy to fix, so you will find it quite uh, easily. So if you want a 50% discount, that's basically 150 euros discount, go ahead and find the error on the website. All right, but today's topics, testing, hey. Uh, we have done some testing in Angular 2 applications, Angular 1 applications. Was it fun or? <laughs> it has to be done. It has to be done, yeah. <laughs> it goes without it, well, you just trust it. <laughs> well, in some projects, they really ask for like, 80, at least 80% coverage on your code. And that's before, like back in the days, it was only like on backend code or Java code or C code or whatever uh, that you need to test it. But testing on a front end was never like, why do I need to do it? You, ju you can just use the application and test it. But now testing becomes more and more important. Not only unit testing, but also end to end testing. And there are some, some cool frameworks for that, Protractor. But Protractor is just a framework to do the testing, to do the technical things. There are also other frameworks like CucumberJS who make the testing more, more related to the business using a behavior-driven development uh, approach. So it's, it's more like testing the behavior of your application. And they use something called Gherkin for that. And Gherkin, uh, I will tell more about it, it's, it's just a domain-specific language. And if you want to play around with it, there's an example project which I will show later on during a demo, which you can just find on GitHub. But first, a fundamental difference. Uh, there's a big difference between unit and end-to-end -end testing. In unit testing, you test the units, the very atomic parts of your application, where you mock out any dependency that has that is on that atomic part. So you test your application from a code and business logic perspective. And in end-to-end -end testing or integration testing, what I believe is that you test the full functional parts of your application. It's not just a component, but how they behave together. And it's basically an, an, a verification that all things integrate together. 
And you test it, of course, from a user behavior perspective. What happens when I click here? What if I click there? What if I go to another uh, side, part of my application? What will it show? Stuff like that. But in Angular 2, there's also something very new. Uh, it was new to me, but it's a component test. And basically, a component test is still just a unit test. But it's more like a component test is more like a hybrid of a unit test and an end-to-end -end test. Because with a component test, you're still doing unit testing, but you're testing behavior of a component. If you take a look at the, the typical Angular 2 component, who has written the Angular 2 component? Nobody? No. There is a template associated with a component. And a component can have functionality. Like, it's a form, and if, when you fill in the form, with a, with, a, with a bad email, for example, it should say an error. But that's one component. So you're testing behavior in a unit test. If you test the component, you're doing a unit test of the component, but you can also test the behavior. So there is a vague line between unit testing and end-to-end -end testing in Angular 2. And I will uh, go further and deeper into that later on. But first, the framework, CucumberJS. Um, well, there are a lot of things related to, to, to the framework, and that's first Gherkin. And Gherkin defines the feature files and your step definitions of what you're trying to test. And I will show a feature file and a step definition later on. But you feed them to CucumberJS, and CucumberJS is the framework that drives your testing. So Protractor is the, the technical implementation of the testing and it's used for uh, locating uh, values, locating input fields, buttons, things in your application. You can feed that locally, you can make that run locally on your computer, on your desktop, on your workstation, or you can test that in, uh, on the web in different containers using different uh, web browsers. You, so you can test against the latest five versions of Chrome, Firefox, whatever you want, Opera, Safari, or just your browser. So your local config tests your, your own browser. And for example, Sauce Labs, that's just one implementation, tests against different browsers. A lot of buzzwords there, a lot of technologies there. So first, I'm going some deeper in uh, all those technologies. What is Protractor? Does anybody know what Protractor is? What's a Protractor? This is a Protractor. You're measuring the sharp angles, angles of your Angular application. That's, that's, how you, that's how I would like to define it. You're just testing your Angular 2 application and you can use Protractor for that because Angular is right. So what's Protractor? It's a Google product. It's the successor of the Scenario Runner, which was the earlier implementation, back when there was the, the first re release of Angular. And it's an end-to-end -end testing framework. Just as other frameworks, it runs on top of Selenium and a web driver, and it's used to do things automatically in the browser. So, there are two basic things in Angular, uh, in Protractor, is that you have locators and actions. You use them to find elements on the page, to perform actions, and to retrieve values. And you have to keep in mind that all those operations are asynchronous. <coughs> those are locators. You can get elements by ID, by CSS. And in, Ang in Angular 1, you could also do by binding and by model, but that doesn't exist anymore in Angular 2. By model exists, but it's, it's only used in forms. And there's a shortcut selector like, like in jQuery. I don't use that. So basic finding of elements. You can also find multiple elements on the page. Like a class, you can use that to define multiple elements. 
you can count all those elements, you can get a specific element at a given index, or you get the first and the last. Those are just examples. Then basic actions, of course. Clicking on a button, sending values to an input field, clearing an input field, and getting the specific value of an attribute of an element. So here you get the value of the value attribute of an element. So what are some best practices in end-to-end -end testing? Uh, well, those are mostly based on a style guide by Carmen. Uh, Carmen is an experienced front-end engineer. She will also be at uh, NGBE. She's uh, the master of ceremony there. So, very nice person. First thing in, uh, in testing, not specifically end-to-end -end testing, is do not cheat on your tests, of course. Uh, you don't have to retest what's been unit tested. Uh, as I have said before, there's like a hybrid approach in component testing. Let's say you have a, a component of a form and that tests if you uh, submit a correct email address. If you test that in your component test, you don't have to retest it in your end to end test, of course. <coughs> so don't repeat yourself. Make your life com comfortable by wrapping common elements in page objects. Page objects are just classes that define a page. And let's say you, you want to find, you want to click on a, on a button multiple times, you can just reuse that implementation instead of always finding the button and clicking again. So that's just simplifying your implementation. An end-to-end -end test is really end-to-end, -end, so you don't mock unless you really need to. And reset your state every time before you initialize a different test, another test. Um, there are some fundamental changes in Protractor 3 to 4 compared to Protractor 0 to 2. Is that uh, there's only Jasmine 2 uh, out of the box support. And all other frameworks like CucumberJS, you need to explicitly import them. You can also test uh, multiple Angular 2 applications on your page. And as I said before, my binding and my model is not available for Angular 2 applications. There's also no perfect support for async actions yet, uh, but there is a solution for that. Let's say you want to make an HTTP call, but you cannot rely on the fact where it will be in one second or in, it will result in five seconds. <coughs> what you could do is you could wait for a specific element to be on the page before you continue. So then you're, then you're uh, bypassing the async uh, operation of HTTP. And there are some collisions in Protractor and jQuery typings, but I think those are resolved uh, at this at this point in time, and there's also like the, the the switch between using typings or add types. So this is a little bit outdated. <coughs> so another um, thing in our overview is um, behavior-driven development and Gherkin. So Gherkin is just a, dom a domain-specific language which allows Business to interact more with your development. Business will define the behavior of your application. So, Gherkin is a way to write that down. And it's also a way for us as developers to automate testing. So it's a set of features describing our behavior. <coughs> for example, this is a feature file. I'll just let you read it for a moment. Defines what we're doing. So it describes our, our feature, also a short, another short description. Um, and here are the steps that will be tested. So for example, when a user clicks on the valid set new password link, and there is a, pa a, a password provided and the, the new password is repeated, when we submit this form, then the set new password form is valid. So when I give an empty password and I don't repeat my password, of course, the form is invalid. So 
This scenario is, are the steps, and these are the data provided into the steps. This is, this is a variable, this is a variable, and this is a variable, and they just map to this. So you, you describe your behavior, and you, you provide input. So feature files contain, contain scenarios related to the feature. Uh, the scenarios also serve as a documentation. So business can write these feature files, which basically describes the feature. And you use those features to automate your testing. So they serve as a documentation, but they also define which tests you need to write. And that, that's where Cucumber kicks in. Cucumber reads those Gherkin files, and, they, and, and Cucumber just can tell you which tests that you did not have implemented yet. That's a cool thing. I'll show you that later on. So what's Cucumber.js? It's the behavior-driven development framework, and it's the glue between Protractor and Gherkin. The Ger Gherkin is the, the definition of your features, and Protractor is the, the technical implementation to do the testing. And Cucumber make, uh, glues that all together. It reads the feature files, and it projects them on the step definitions. <coughs> so, demo. So I built a simple application. It doesn't really, it doesn't really contact the server. It's just, just checking whether your input is correct or not. And there's like different forms: forget password, register password, set a new password link. Um, so when you try to register and you do, don't fill in every required element you will get uh, related error messages. So for example, the login form, the login form can be described as, in a feature file, of course, when the user clicks the login link, the email is the user email in the login form, and the password is the user password. When you submit that form, you should check whether the form is valid or not. And as I said before, all these things are variables. So you provide those variables in the example table. And when you run this, Cucumber will inject those values. I can show you that. Um,
What's that law in physics? Murphy? Yeah. Mm -hmm. wrong but thank god I have two tests uh, two things to show um, it's not working in a browser but it's working in an electron container so this is the same application running in an electron container but as you can see it it's cucumber is automatically injecting the values that I provided in the example table Testing if the password is long enough, if the, the two passwords match, etc. So you see that the framework fills in all that data and provides you feedback on whether this has worked or whether it, it, where it went wrong, which scenario has failed, stuff like that. So how is this implemented? First, of course, those are basics. You need a protractor configuration. Um, what I can show you is the difference you, you have between using a, a normal protractor setup and using uh, a Cucumber JS protractor setup. The main difference is here. Like I said, any other framework than originally from Protractor, you need to explicitly require in your configuration. And that's why you need to say custom framework. So you need to require the framework, and then you also need to define your, your specs. And your specs in this case are your feature files. And you also need uh, to import and require the step definitions. And the step definitions are the things that map the steps in your feature file, like given and when, then, to real code implementations of clicking, getting a value, setting a value, and asserting if something is, is correct. So the, the framework here, here just uses a regular expression, which uses this annotation here to check whether it's a given uh, a, a when or a then statement. It gets the value out of the let's see here email and it gives it back as a parameter to the callback. Here email. Then again, you go to the login page object where you define how to get that specific element on your page. So for the login page, you define a login a page object where you just define your page. So your page has a form, of course. It has a password input field, an email input field, and a submit button. How does this help you? It helps you when, for example, Let's say you need to test input on the email input uh, element 10 times. And you have 10 tests to do that. If your implementation changes in your website, and you don't use ID login email anymore, but you use email login, then you need to change that value in 10 of your tests. And now you only need to do it once in your page object. So you simplify your implementation. Um, 
So those feature files map to these step definitions, and those step definitions do the actual testing of your uh, application. So basically, it's just the first steps are the given, the when, and in the then statement, you do the, the assertions. So you expect something to be of some value or to become some value. Because basically in, in Angular 2 applications, you can think everything being asynchronous. So it will not be true right in time, but it might become true at some time. So, just a small recap. We use feature files to describe our behavior and we read out those features and scenarios using the cucumber just which maps the behavior on step definitions. And the step definitions are something we need to implement and simplify using page objects. Basically, all we do is we automate the browser interactions we have with Protractor. So instead of before doing manual testing, we just uh, scenarios, clicking here, you see, uh, filling in the field there, seeing what the, what the output is. We automate that behavior. And we do that using code. Uh, you probably already heard of some scenario recorders where you just like use a, a Chrome plugin and you click record here. And you click on a, on, a, on a button, you fill in a value, then you stop the recording and then you can use that recording to replay your tests. That doesn't give a, a lot of flexibility, so using code you can do way more. And of course you need to test against expectations using the assertion framework. And that assertion framework can be anything. Uh, in this example I've used Chai and Chai is expected, but there are others. So what do I think is next and what might the future bring? Uh, well, you definitely need to make it part of your continuous integration setup. Doing this is not easy, uh, because in some cases, for example, you might have uh, uh, some Linux machine somewhere with no visual interface, but you're testing something visual. So you need, you need to make some changes there with, uh, I'm not sure what the technical term is there, but there are some windows you can pop up in a pure uh, terminal machine. Or use a Windows machine, or use a graphical interface on Linux. So you need to make it part of your continuous integration setup. There will be better asynchronous support in the future. And I think that more automated testing might lead to less uh, QA testing teams, and more developers writing tests. Um, I don't know about you guys, but I like writing tests, because that enables me to, to make sure that that gives me a good feeling that the code that I deliver is working. And I think every developer should learn how to write tests. There are some... I will, I will make some more, uh, more reading links here, but those are for me the most important. There are... This is a very good read by one of the Angular 2 contributors, Victor Safkin. There are three ways to test Angular 2 components, and of course there's a protractor documentation. And that was it. Are there any questions? Has anybody found the error on the website? You said that you cannot make tests components Ah. So what was your question? Is it no, just as a recap? I was wondering if is it possible, if it's possible to uh, make a test without the interface. Well, it, it is possible if you do like the hybrid approach with the component testing, where you test the behavior of your component. Then all that you do is you well. Yeah, it's perfectly possible. But if you need, if you really need to visually test something, you need a visual interface. And what you could argue is that you can use like something like uh, Phantom JS. But that's a headless browser; you don't see anything. So you are not really 
testing it because PhantomJS is not a real browser. So you're not doing a real end-to-end -end test. And that's the, the pain. Oh, the pain is less these days, but let's say until five years ago, getting cross-browser applications working was a pain. Now it's less less of a pain, but there are still diff differences. So testing against different browsers is still uh, still. A I can see where you can specify a specific page. Let's say I have three pages in my Angular application. Mm -hmm. How do, you, how do you specify I want this, this page and this component and what is that? Well, for a specific component, being a specific page. Well, I'm not sure what your question is, but where you define what you're testing is just in your, in your feature file. Okay. So, in this case, using Gherkin, you can just describe what you're doing. And that can also be going from one page to another page. So you don't have to. It can be route, go to a specific route of my Angular 2 application. Okay. Did you find the uh, Angular 2 to be easier to test? Or? Um, well, I followed because the upgrade it's, it's that. A it's a different model, right? Yeah, it's completely different. Because of TypeScript and so on, what? Well, TypeScript is an enabler for me. It's because when you have a bug, okay, it's a bug in JavaScript. Yeah. That's right. Yeah, that's true. But TypeScript will help you to eliminate those bugs that you have in JavaScript. That's one thing. Yeah, but will not allow me to do things I would do in JavaScript because TypeScript limitations. Yeah. Well, what I found in testing in Angular 2 specific is I followed the entire upgrade path from alpha, beta to RC2. Yeah. Always changing things. Updating the tests was a pain because they changed the way of what, how they want to do it. But that's pure unit testing. Uh, completely. With every alpha to beta to beta, beta to RC, RC to final. But now it's so easy to test an Angular 2 component service that it's just a breeze. And uh, with the watcher list and so on, so I think they, they went away with that. So watcher list? For the, the thing if you put 2,000 watchers in Angular 1, then performance ah, yeah, yeah. Wise, so yeah. performance wise, because performance testing wise, is also performance things. Well, you could think Angular 2... What's the feel you have, I mean, just... Well, it's way better. Way better. It's way, yeah, of course, if you, if you take a look at Angular 1, Angular 1 is more like a graph, where data goes from, from everywhere to everywhere, and Angular 2 is a tree. Your data only goes one way. It's from up till down. Uh -huh. And in Angular 1, it was... And then, oh, I need to check, is my application stable? No, do it again. Okay, so... In Angular 2, it's just, well, and done. Okay, but then if you want to have something down, dating up, it has to go through the pass or what? Well, you have your single source of truth, your data is somewhere. Okay. So if you're, if you have a tree of components, uh -huh. and your data is here, it, it's not specifically be, uh, it not, it's not necessary in your application. It could be outside your application. So when you update data lower in your component, you just update it here, and where it gets inserted in the tree, it gets down, but it doesn't go up. Because the data you insert in a subtree is but never needed up in the tree. Alright, so it falls like. Yeah, falls like it rains, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But that's a talk on this one. Difference angular one and angular two. Yeah. No, I'm on one, so I'm on that. <laughs> one point six or? Uh, not even. <laughs> one point five. Four. I have to check the code here. There are big differences eh, if you want to go to angular two at some point. It might be good that you go to at least the components. It's on my bower edges and somewhere. <laughs> Still using bower. Yeah. <laughs> works, works. Uh, NPM, so okay, works too. Well, we have both because of historical reasons. Yeah, that, that's also <laughs> a debate. Uh, how, how do you need to upgrade it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Other <laughs> questions? Thank you. Thank you.